Have you ever been halfway through your cabin air filter change and realized you don't know which way the arrow on your cabin air filter needs to point? Don't worry, because I'm going to guide you past some of the misleading stuff you may have encountered along the way and help you figure out which way the cabin air filter goes on your vehicle, no matter what sort of vehicle it is. First off, if you've already bought your filter, check to see if it has an arrow printed on it at all. Some budget filters are just a single layer of material or the manufacturer doesn't care which way it goes because it works the same either way. If that's the case, you don't have to worry about putting it in upside down. Just make sure that if it's not perfectly square, that it gets installed in a way that makes sense. You might also be lucky and get a filter that can only be installed in one way. For filters with an arrow and no obvious single way to install it, you'll need to get some context. First, you may be thinking about that panel you removed to get to the old filter and how it may have an arrow on it. Does it say anything about the filter or does it just say up? If it says up, that's to prevent people from trying to force the panel back into place the wrong way around. And unless it says something about the airflow direction or the filter specifically, ignore it. At least in regards to how you're installing your filter. Next, look at the filter. Did you buy a manufacturer original equipment style filter or an aftermarket filter? I'll explain why this matters and then the different things you see written on filters will make sense. Many cabin filters have standardized shapes and the aftermarket tends to just make the shape and not know which way it will go on every single vehicle. Two different vehicles could use the same filter and orient them differently. So a this way up label will work on one vehicle and not the other. The auto manufacturer has the data on all their cars and could make a different cabin filter part number for every trim if they wanted to. The aftermarket doesn't tend to get to charge dealer prices, so they're going to keep part numbers to a minimum to save shelf space at part stores and warehouses. What is consistent, however, is that air flows into one side of the filter and out the other, so an airflow direction can be noted. If you bought an original equipment style filter, it will probably say which side goes up. However, most aftermarket filters and some original equipment filters will have an arrow that shows which way the air should flow through it. While most of the time the airflow will be down, it's important to check to make sure you're not one of the exceptions by looking for clues, such as the blower motor. When you turn your air conditioning on, the fan that blows the air is called a blower motor. These only work effectively in one direction, where they take the air from the center and push it away towards the outside of the fan cage. If you can see the fan, you'll know right away that it is pulling air towards the center, and cabin air filters tend to be placed right before the fan so that they can protect it from debris, which you may have noticed as you pulled your old filter out. That debris is actually why we have to get the direction right in the first place. These filters get layers that trap finer particles as the air progresses through, so if it's upside down, the fine layer is trapping just everything, and it's going to clog up way faster. If you have it the correct way, the top layer traps the big stuff, and the finer stuff passes by it as it gets past the big stuff. It then gets caught in the deeper layers, and since each layer is taking care of different stuff, air can still flow through it relatively well even near the end of the filter's useful life. But wait, what if you still can't find the blower motor, even with a flashlight, a mirror, or even a boroscope? Well, you can always turn on the fan and test it the same way you'd test for wind, with a piece of paper or grass. Whatever you have around that you're not going to accidentally drop into the air ducts or suddenly get pulled in and chopped up by the blower. I'd start on a low speed. Some fans can get pretty strong and may pull air harder than you think. Finally, as much as I'd like for you to watch this video again next time you change your cabin filter, I'm going to save you some time with this last tip. You know that panel that had that less than helpful arrow on it? Grab a permanent marker and write on the inside both the airflow direction and which side of the panel is up. That way you can pull the panel off, see exactly which way to install any type of filter, and with both labels written on the same side, you don't even have to flip the panel around to make sure you're holding it the right way up. Hopefully this video will help you avoid confusion, save you some time, and even some money, because even something as basic as a cabin filter replacement can set you back more than you think when taking the car in for service. Thanks for watching, and consider watching some more of my educational automotive content or even subscribing.